Now, to discuss character building ideas, here is your host, Dr. Denzi. Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked you that he might sift you as a wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Wow, family, those are the words of God to Peter. We found those in Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Oh, by the way, welcome back to this Practical Christianity series on making friends for God. This episode is based on the Sabbath school lesson number four, titled Prayer Power, Interceding for Others. As I think of intercessory prayer, I think of heaps of things, things that I have prayed for on behalf of other people. It is interesting to see in the story of Christ and Peter how Christ addresses everyone. He says, Satan has asked you that you may fall out, but then he points out to Peter alone. So first he's talking to everybody and then he focuses specifically pleading for Peter only. The interesting thing or the interesting aspect here is that Christ knew that Peter would fall. And yet this did not stop him from praying for Peter, almost as if knowing, look, I need to pray for you because you'll be back and I need your faith and your experience to be of, of, of some benefit to other people. How would you feel if Christ was telling you directly, you know what? I know you will mess up but I am still praying for you. Now, think with me. Can you think of any other examples where Satan had power over a child of God? Well, close to this story is that of Judas, who Jesus knew got lost in his sin. It is a sad story indeed. Other examples are that of Elijah, Jonah, David. What about Job? Perhaps out of all of these, Job was the most innocent of all persons as described in the Bible. Do you think that God was interceding on behalf of all of these individuals having a behind-the-scenes picture of Job might tell us that he indeed intercedes? Although I can see how some of you might hesitate to think so in that story. Perhaps, again, the most relevant questions here are to reflect today and ask ourselves, why did Jesus intercede? What did he do for Peter? How did he do it? What assurance we have of such an intercession ourselves? You might ask these questions, uh, maybe even to yourselves in first person. It will look something like this. Why do I intercede for others? We could even go and ask, could we take a step back and say, am I interceding on behalf of others at all? How do I do it? What exactly am I asking for? How can I be sure that my intercession is worth doing even? We can find the answers in a few passages of Scripture. We already read one. Jesus said to Peter that he was praying for him because the devil was after him. We read that. So we intercede for others because of the exact same reason. Also, he, as Jesus did, he did it in prayer. And so can we. We can do it in prayer. A similar passage is found in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 to 21, where Paul is saying something interesting. He says, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, he might give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, that we are the riches of his glories in his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, 
which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in his right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. What we find here, my Adventist Reflections family, is that Paul is also interceding for other people and he does this in prayer. In his message about how he prays for others, he mentions how the Father desires to call everybody. The Father gave power and dominion to Christ whom he raised from the dead. The interceding aspect here is that Paul is sharing the usual prayers that he tends to do to others and for others. It is as if he was saying, look, I'm going to show you my prayer request. It is as if saying to the people he's interceding for, look, I am interceding for you. Look at the prayer list. It's like saying, hey guys, you know what? I care. Paul was basically doing the exact same thing that Jesus was doing. So what are the parallels here? We have a few. Number one, both of them actually mention what they are praying for. They mention specifically what they're praying for. It, it, was just, it wasn't just like a, hey, I am praying for you. That's something that I know I tend to do. First, in the passage, Jesus said, I pray for you that your faith should not fail. Paul, on the other side, is saying, I mention you in my prayers that the God may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that your eyes of understanding be enlightened, that you may see the hope of his calling. Basically, both are praying for the same faith of those whom they intercede for, and both are making it clear to them that this is what they're praying for. Now, this is the interesting thing, and I would like to invite you to indeed reflect on this. Ask yourself, how many prayers have I lifted up to heaven asking for someone's health? Maybe somebody's well-being in general, somebody's study, somebody's relationship, somebody's job, etc., etc., etc. As compared to how many prayers have I lifted for someone's faith? How many times have I let them know that the very same thing that I'm praying for is about that? It's about them. It's about their faith. The second parallel about Paul's theology as well as that for Jesus in relation to the intercessory prayer, might be found in Hebrews chapter 7, verses 20 to 28. I invite you to read it in your time, and maybe soon after you finish to this episode, or even better, pause this and read it now. So, in this passage, Paul is saying that the Father confirmed Jesus' intercession for us as valid, as relevant. Jesus did not need any oath that 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 is as if saying he did not need any confirmation of anybody he didn't even need to swear to you you know believe me believe me this is going to happen he was confirmed by the father himself jesus christ knew this he is god and he had and continues to have even after living here as a human flesh um, the access that he only has to the father and he grants us the same access through him so the parallel is that intercessory prayer in faith for the faith of others is of much value when done in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I am not producing an idea that we are not to pray for our physical needs because that will be like denying what Christ said in the Lord's Prayer, as we know it, where he says, give us our daily bread. And he encourages us, encourages us in, in other passages to pray for our needs. But we know that God knows such, such things. He knows our needs. What I'm saying here is that if we are in the business of saving souls, and when I'm saying business, I'm not saying you are here to make money. There is no reward. I mentioned this before. Nobody has anything to gain by bringing others to Christ except the joy of the salvation of others, the love of God. So if we are in this business, in this idea of saving souls, those other aspects, 
the physical aspects are not as necessarily important. They are not as relevant to pray to God about in intercession, but we are to pray for their faith, to intercede that God deploys hosts of angels at the command of the Holy Spirit to reach out the minds of those who we love and those who, with whom we interact every day, those who God wants to reach out through your intercession. From the book, Making Friends for God, Mark Finley shares four practical recommendations that I would like to share with you as we finish. Number one, set aside a, a specific time and place to seek God for the salvation of others. Number two, Ask God to impress you with the people who need prayer. The Holy Spirit will impress you with the names of those in need. Number three, make a list of those who you are impressed to pray for. And number four, invite others to join you in your times of intercession, just like Jesus invited Peter, James, and John into his inner circle for times of earnest prayer. Pray silently and ask God for the needs of those around you. But also pray out loud so that you focus on your prayers and avoid your mind from wandering. There is indeed something special about praying out loud that keeps us focused. When we have an appointed time to meet with God, a designated prayer place, our audible prayers become more meaningful and our prayer life is enhanced. We don't have to worry about Satan hearing our prayers because at the sound of earnest prayers, Satan's whole hosts and himself tremble and flees. When we seek God in prayer, Heavenly angels encircle us. The evil angels are beaten back and we can commune with God in confidence. When we pray for others, our prayers unite us with Christ's prayers, our mightly intercessor in the throne of God. He immediately employs all the resources of heaven to positively influence the ones for whom we are praying. Jesus prayed for Peter by name. He prayed that Peter will experience a deep conversion. Jesus' prayers were answered, and Peter became the mighty preacher at Pentecost. My Adventist Reflections family, it is wonderful to see and to know that someone who cares is praying for you. But here is something even more incredible. To know that Jesus is praying for you in heaven right now. And perhaps to know that he is also praying for you every time that somebody intercedes on your behalf. Your name is in his lips. Your concerns are in his heart. And your anxieties, your fears and worries, they matter to him. I am Dr. Dancy, and I will lift up a prayer for you who is listening to this episode. Dear Father in heaven, I praise your name for receiving this prayer. And it is because of this mercy that you have for us, the mercy that endures forever that I request on behalf of every person who is listening this episode to this prayer. Father, today I pray that you be with him, that you be with her, that you might embrace my Adventist Reflections podcast family. Keep them in your book of life. Help them to remain in that book. I pray that your grace be on them, that you shine on them your love, your kindness, your mercy, and your protection. Strengthen their faith that they might be with you in paradise that they might also bring others who want to be your friend. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Have you listened to our mental health podcast? It's called Gluten Time. 
You can follow and listen to Gluten Time with Dr. Dancy and Dr. Nard on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Remember to follow and comment on our Adventist Reflections Network media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and see when we release new episodes. We also have podcasts in Spanish. Go check them out. God bless you.